Hello, Darth Vegan here, back with another episode of Kerbal Space Program Season 4. Last episode, last two episodes, we've been trying to establish a Kerbin space station, and I decided after all the mess I've been making, who better to straighten it out than Valentina Kerman, ace pilot. So I got her ready and prepped, and we're going to send her up in another vessel, and she is going to attach the two floating portions of the Kerbin space station into one station and get that mess all straightened out with the help of Sean and um, uh, what was his name? Java Blanja. Yeah, that's it. So uh, she, without further ado, she's going to hop into a vessel and uh, get it straightened out. All right, so I skipped the launch and the intersection and we are here now with the rendezvous with the first part of the orbital Kerbin space station. So Valentina is just pulling up alongside it in her repair vessel and she's gonna see what's what as far as what she needs to do to get these two vessels in alignment and attached to one another. Okay so I guess I'm gonna get uh, Valentina out on an EVA here and just walk her on over to the spacewalk, that is, <laughs> to the space station. And as we float on by towards the uh, the entrance of the station, we see the horrible application of the uh, of the battery there. <laughs> that's a sets a cattywampus. That's a technical term for crooked cattywampus. Sets cattywampus on there. And uh, so now uh, she's also going to check the inventory of the parts list so that uh, she can see, you know, maybe uh, Java Blanca can put that battery back in there and we can uh, make it make it a little cleaner and make it a little be more beautiful. So now I'm going to transfer the uh, uh, Sean from the couple of module back to the hitchhiker so that uh, Valentina can become the pilot of this portion of the station. Of course, the, over time, the two parts of the station have drifted apart, so they're about, uh, what was that? They're about 5,000 meters apart, I think, uh, which is not terrible, but not good. Now, of course, this portion of the station has uh, no pilot and no way to control it, so it's going to be up to Valentina to bring this portion of the station back in alignment with uh, the other the other portion. All right, so this thing does not have any engines, so we're gonna have to use RCS to get in alignment with this other portion of the orbital station. And so we're going to set it as our target, and she is going to orient herself so that she is pointing at said target, and then uh, start pushing our way using RCS um, towards the um, the target, uh, hopefully, and uh, get there without too much problem. I don't think we don't have too much problem there, but uh, we should be able to get there and pop a docking port onto this uh, this portion of the station and connect both this one and the other one together uh, into one glorious station all right so it took a little while to get <laughs> to get there with using the RCS because I didn't want to use up a lot of the monopropellant even though I got I got plenty I, I brought uh, 700 and something so I got plenty but I didn't want to use it all up in uh, traversing that 5,000 uh, meters so we um, we got we got pretty close now so now she's just gonna fine-tune their intersection so that she can uh, get into position and get these guys uh, connected once and for all. All right, so now it's going to be a very delicate maneuver to get these two uh, into a position so that they can uh, connect with one another. And I'm trying to figure out what the best way to do that will be, but I think it really just all boils down to uh, just uh, very gently uh, pushing them together. <laughs> and so it does take a little while, so I'm going to speed up the time just a little bit because uh, 
this was this was something I wanted to do very very gently and sometimes I get a little impatient and so <laughs> I tend to rush things but I really didn't want to do that this time so I'm gonna be very gentle very precise and we're gonna push these two vessels into alignment we're gonna pop on the docking ports docking ports I think that this one already has one the other one does not have one so let's put on the docking port there and then we'll let those two things connect and then uh, we should be in a good position to uh, finally get these two attached Whew. it has been quite the ordeal um, <laughs> originally there weren't even supposed to be two it was supposed to be just just one and then I screwed up with the antenna and yeah well just watched through the last couple episodes <laughs> As <laughs> you'll see, but uh, anyway, this this I hope will uh, finally draw a conclusion to this whole mess, and then this next uh, next episode we can uh, bring up a solar panel module to uh, produce a little more power on this thing. And just like that, we are in plenty plenty of space here to. Uh, to get these two connected in fact a little too close probably but you know it is what it is we can we can fine-tune a little bit the first thing we have to do is get that other docking port attached and so first I want to make sure that we've got the docking ports that we need in here and we're gonna need Java outside with his trusty screwdrivers and wrenches and whatnot to uh, get these two uh, in our to get the docking port in a position that it can actually be attached. And I think we're going to have to use more than one Kerbal to pick this thing up. If I remember, it's too heavy for one Kerbal. So I'm going to have him get some buddies out here in just a moment. And uh, let them help carry. And so now they can help. I think they just have to be in the vicinity. So they should be able to help carry the, uh, the docking port there. Bingo. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful stuff right there. You can't you can't get more beautiful than that. That's just that's just lovely as a dove right there. So now we just need to get uh, Java attached to the module there. <laughs> that way we don't uh, don't let him float away. Valentina needs to pilot this thing. I think Sean will be okay on the outside there as long as we don't smash him. But I don't. There's not much uh, cause for alarm there, Sean. Just hang on tight. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh, Valentina, what are you doing? Oh my. Oh my gosh, she's got, she's got it out of control. Valentina, you were doing so well. You really disappointed me. Really disappointed me. Now, you've got it under control. You've got, you've got it all back under control. She just forgot to turn on the sass. So, <laughs> every time I get out, I forget to turn the SAS back on. Oh, that's a real problem. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and get these two attached. Should be no problem. We're relatively close already. All I have to do is just gently use my RCS to get us into a better alignment and then also use the uh, RCS to push us down into uh, the loving arms of the other docking port. <laughs> loving arms. Oh darn, shucky darn. I just, I just banged it just a little bit, just enough, and now it's just, it's all cluster. Um, can't uh, I can't stop it from spinning using the cheat, t the time warp cheat, um, because I had a curveball on the ladder, so I had to bring Sean in, and so now we got to try again to get it into alignment. Uh, it is definitely far enough away now that I can push it into alignment without too much problem. I think uh, it should be able to just ease it right in there but I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up just a little bit so that we don't have to uh, deal with all of that okay so now you should be able to give it just a little kiss, just a kiss, just a sweet little gentle docking port kiss. And we should be attached and have one big happy station. I didn't really pay attention to 
how the two were aligned as far as ladders go, so I probably could have done a better job with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but on the positive side, the uh, the solar panels seem to be slightly aligned, so that that's, that's something. But at least we have one l big, lovely station now. Um, we do need to have one more docking port um, on one of the cupolas because I would like to... Uh, add more modules to this but first let's get this battery off because we got batteries in the uh, we got batteries in the, um, the storage container for this nice big battery so it didn't really need this now that we have the two attached um, I'm trying to figure out how to get that back into my inventory and I'm having a little bit of trouble there um, drag it into my inventory there buddy drag it over to the backpack nope you already screwed it up and screwed it up you have to wait till you first grab it. When you, when you first grab it, you have to drag it on over. <laughs> All right, so now we need to probably add a docking port on the top of the cupola. So in order to do that, we're going to have to rendezvous with our parts vessel that Valentina brought up. All right, so I've switched over to the other vessel, the... Uh, the rescue vessel that Valentina brought and we're going to go ahead and do our uh, intersection here I'm just decreasing our speed or I, I've already done the intersection now I'm just waiting to float closer there and so we're gonna uh, just go ahead and pop in there and then we should be able to maneuver the station since it is uh, chock full of RCS should be able to maneuver it over and retrieve all the items from the storage on this rocket. I totally over-engineered this rocket. I, I wasn't sure what all I was going to have to do to get them all organized. So I brought plenty of um, Delta V. So <laughs> this is way more than I needed. But anyway. So um, I'm trying to find the rocket. I always have trouble finding the, uh, the other vessel. So I'm just going to maneuver the station over uh, to the... Uh, the, the parts rocket there and then we'll be in shape for more additions all right and then I wanted to pull in my my uh, solar panels there so that we don't have any accidents you don't want that for sure and so now that those are pulled in I want to check the inventory make sure we got some docking ports yes we do I think I brought both normal docking ports and some juniors just in case also brought another probodobodon and some girders I mean, you never know what you're gonna need so I uh, just brought a little bit of uh, the things I thought I would probably need and looks like the station is floating really nicely up close to the other vessel there. And so I think uh, I just want to get a little bit closer. <laughs> Sean's still hanging on. The... Oh, no, that's Java. Okay. <laughs> uh, Java's hanging on the outside there. Don't smash him. My God, do not smash Java Bonjan. That's, that's all I'm asking. Please, for the love of Pete. Um, so he's getting ready to do the transfer of parts. And it's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky, but I think we can do it. Uh, as soon as we get close enough so that we can access this uh, part here, we should be able to uh, move the, the parts over to the other container as well. It's going to be tricky. I am not denying that at all. But we may be able to uh, just use... Uh, the parts from this container and attach them to the top of the cupola just from here so we'll see what what we do here um, all right yeah we can reach it so might as well just do it from here if we can and look at that just like that the docking port is attached and we can be happy that <laughs> we have a nice good attachment there now um, I think that we should probably move the remainder of these materials over to the other uh, storage containers that, so that we have them in case we need to add additional parts to the station. So it probably would be a good idea to uh, 
to go ahead and do that. So we'll, we'll probably end up having to move this station closer, I think, in order to do so. I did notice that you can put those EVA canisters on your back, which is super cool. I like that a lot. Um, and Javla Bonj is going to go ahead and pop on to this, uh, this parts vessel here and just so that he's hanging on to a ladder. And we should be able to uh, use the two vessels and maneuver closer uh, with no problem, especially with uh, the wonderful turn on SAS. Oh, I forgot again. <laughs> so I'm doing something a little different in this video. If you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have. Uh, I'm not doing live commentary on this video. I recorded it while the house was like super noisy, lots of activity going on. And um, so I didn't record the commentary while I was playing. I decided to do the commentary uh, at a later time, whenever it was nice and quiet. And so <laughs> it's a little unusual for me. I don't. I know a lot of the YouTubers that do Kerbal, like Matt Lown. Uh, he he does it this way. I uh, I find it completely baffling. I'm just like, oh, this is way whew, way different. <laughs> Maybe it'll turn out okay. Anyway, maybe I'll edit that out. No, I won't. Okay, so, um, so we're going to just move the two canisters closer together so that these two, you can't see my mouse, these two canisters uh, are close enough that I can just drag and drop items from uh, one to the other. I was really worried about smashing Sean, but not worried enough to bring him in. So, <laughs> so you can see that... Uh, He's, uh, he's awfully close there. He's awfully close. Alright, so I think we should be just about ready. Probably should stop the floating. Stop the floating! Stop the madness! Yeah, let's go ahead and open up both inventories and see if we can... Oh yeah, they now had a nice little contact there, but nobody got smashed, so that's good. We're able to drag over the components from one ship to the other. And now we're pretty much done with this little rescue ship. It's a, it's a nice little ship. It's got plenty of fuel, but... Uh, it's really unneeded, really, at this point. So, uh, I think Valentina's going to go ahead over and uh, jump in the pilot seat of this thing. And then we'll bring Joppa back over to the other vessel so that he can uh, get back on board the station. At some point, we'll probably need to um, switch out that crew. Uh, Javla and Sean, I don't want them to be up there too long. But... Uh, uh, at the same time, they're doing such a good job right now that uh, they'll probably stay up there for just a little while longer. At least, at least through this next mission, where we attach the solar panels onto the uh, onto the vessel, they're at least going to be there that long. But they could be there a little bit longer. But at some point, we'll definitely need to swap out crews, and so we're just gonna we're gonna go ahead and add on this probodobodon to the to the station, which is an excellent idea, I think. Which is why I'm doing it. Um, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, the probodobodon on board this station will allow us to um, to go ahead and not have to have a pilot on board to maneuver the the station around to other parts of the uh, the orbit there. So he's gonna go ahead and get that attached, no problem. And now this station is what I would like to consider fully functional. No prohibitions, no restrictions like we previously had that uh, we had to uh, work around all the different problems that we, <laughs> that we were having. But now it's a, it's, a, it's a much better shape. Much better shape. This, is, uh, this has been a great mission for Valentina to bring it all together, to be the final piece of the pie, bring Javla and Sean the parts that they need to, uh, to finish up the station. And uh, so, that being said, uh, now we only have to get this station away from the, uh, the rescue vessel there and then uh, get rid of this rescue vessel, uh, however we determine to, uh, to do so. Uh, we might just keep it, I don't know, it's, uh, it's got plenty of Delta V, so it might be something we want to keep uh, just here in orbit, but probably not. I think, in fact, um, Valentina left some dinner on the stove, so she probably needs to get back home to her family. Um, they've got dinner ready. And so, <laughs> uh, 
Um, did that sound sexist? I didn't mean for it to. <laughs> She's not cooking dinner. They cooked dinner for her. She didn't go up and do a space mission and then her family's waiting for her to cook dinner. No, that's not what I meant at all. She, she, she went on a space... Never mind. She's going to go home. Her husband made her dinner. It's all good. Maybe her, maybe her wife. I don't know. Oh boy, I'm rambling. Okay, so let's let's just uh, let's just go on back to the um, back to the action here. Okay, so I'm trying to get the uh, the solar panels into alignment here so that they all open at the same time, and have, <laughs> having a little trouble when one opens, the other closes. So I'm just gonna have to manually open these so that they're all open at the same time. And then once we get the uh, the next solar module on here. We can consider taking these off if we want to. Uh, I don't know that we'll absolutely need to, but we may want to, so um, we can decide once we get to that part. But now it is time for Valentina to map her return to Kerbin. She's going to warp around so that she is in the position she wants to be in uh, for her return to the Space Center. And as of yet, as of yet, I have been unable to time it correctly to land exactly on the Space Center runway or landing pad or anywhere near. <laughs> so, we're going to give it another try and see if I can do the timing right. I, I tell you, I am the worst, the absolute worst at getting this timing correct. I tell you, it has plagued me since... Now, I, okay, I have done it a few times, but it, it was just pure blind luck and I have been unable to um, to to replicate that in, in subsequent landings and so <laughs> so I'm gonna give it another try with Valentina here and see if she can do what others have failed to do and that is land on the Space Center I tell you what it is I get nervous I get nervous when I start thinking about Oh, am I close enough? I'm gonna overshoot, and I always up end up uh, under undershooting. Undershooting is that what I'm trying to? I always end up flying too little and burning too much, um, and then even dropping my engines too soon, so that uh, the uh, the capsule really slows you down, and I end up falling short of the space center like every single time. I tell you every. What did I say? Every single time. Yes, every single time. It has uh, it has been... Whew, it's been rough. It's been rough. So now I've got this little tiny capsule. This was what I originally was going to use to just come home. But, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I've got it all. We had plenty of fuel in the big stage. And so I didn't end up needing this uh, small return vessel. But I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking the, uh, the station was in higher orbit. Than it, than it actually was, but anyway, I'm a little bit for uh, over-engineering vessels anyway, so that's what I did. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into re-entry here. And you can see that uh, uh, I, fell I fell short again. <laughs> I, I popped, the, uh, popped the chute too soon and uh, fell short. So, unfortunately, once again... Falling short of the glory that should have been. And uh, so now we're going to have to land way out in the grasslands. And touchdown. Valentina made it back. And then that is the end of that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, throw me some likes. Leave me some comments. And as always, subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys next time. Gerbils wait by the window, vaguely looking down at their saw, and hoping possibly Jebediah will come home with some rock. From Minmus or the moon, may.
crowds gather as hundreds of rocks of our favorite kind. From endless fill their bedrooms, but they don't actually 